Hi everyone, I'm Dylan McGee, founder and executive producer of Makers, and welcome to Makers at Home, coming to you live from rainy Westchester, New York. Um, but we have a bit of sunshine coming your way, a big surprise, we've invited a man to Makers at Home. Um, and we're starting with a bang, everyone, the one and only Justin Baldoni. Um, before I talk a little bit about Justin, I just want to um, explain that about three years ago, we uh, at Makers have a mission to accelerate the women's movement. And we realized we couldn't do that without the other half of the equation. And so we created um, a series called Makers Men, where we profiled uh, men who aren't just talking the talk, but walking the walk. And I remember in a production meeting, our senior producer, Elizabeth Bonell said, um, if we're doing this series, we have to profile Justin Baldoni. And I'm so glad we did. Um, of course, you know Justin um, as the incredible actor that he is, and um, Raphael on Jane the Virgin, um, but he is also a documentary filmmaker. Um, he is a producer and director, and one of his first films is one of my favorite movies, Five Feet Apart, which I really want to talk to him about, you know, given everything we're going through right now as a whole new context. Um, he's an entrepreneur. Uh, and created Wayfarer Entertainment, which we are so glad exists because um, his production company is really challenging Hollywood to rethink um, what representation is of people of all kinds in front and behind the camera. Um, and I can't wait to hear what they have um, in the works. And if you have not seen Justin Baldoni's TED Talk, um, it is about redefining masculinity and not only that we have to do it, but that it's also okay. Um, I really think every student around the globe needs to um, watch this. So if you haven't done it, give yourself 18 minutes of pure joy and inspiration. Um, and if that isn't enough, he's just launched the, his Be Love Mass campaign to raise money around the homeless in LA. We're going to talk about that. And... Last but not least, following his Instagram over the past six weeks has been like a jolt of joy and inspiration and soothing, um, and I can't wait to talk to him about that. Justin, we got a lot to do. Here I come. You ready? Uh, here we go. It's waiting. We always hoped that the technology. Hey! We did it. How's Hi, it going? Justin. I feel it's... like it's early for you. You've been having these late nights. Thanks yeah, for... it's, it's been pretty. It's you, I got to say, this is the first time I've been on somebody else's live. I feel so happy right now. <laughs> I, mean, I love it. You mean we ought to invite you? It's so sweet. I'm so yeah. happy to talk to you. I'm so happy to have you here and to chat about. By the I mean, way, I feel, I feel like, I feel we, like got... we should match. I feel like we should wear yeah, the you. same glasses, by the way. <laughs> uh, now, are yours readers or do you? No, well, these are uh, these are a prescription, but I'm standing. Uh, I'll show you my little desk. So I'm. this is like a homemade uh, little desk I have here. But oh. but the uh, I get dizzy when I look at uh, the outside world. So I'm taking them off. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I get, I, maybe I need glasses too. I get dizzy looking at the outside world too. How are you uh, doing? Justin. How's it going? Oh, that's, uh, let me ask you that first. Remember, I'm the interviewer. You've got to take on this new role. I get to ask you questions. How's it going? Um, it's going, it's going good. I, I will say I've never experienced Groundhog Day like this. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. I can't, today's Friday, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, they're all blending. It's the weirdest thing. I, I, it's like every day feels the same in such a bizarre way. It's like, uh, I, and my wife and I were talking about it last night because it was Thursday night. And I'm like, wait, tomorrow's Friday? I thought it was just Friday. It was just Friday. <laughs> so I don't know what's <laughs> happening. There is a little joy in Friday. We all at Makers have a little, like, we do this, these water coolers at the end of the day, at, you know, end of oh, day you on do? Friday. Yeah, we all get together and we say, okay, it does feel good that we have the weekend ahead of us. 
Um, and you, so, and yeah, totally. It's just, it's just such a weird thing to know that like, it, it feels like every, especially when you have two kids running around the house and there's no school and it's all here. It's like every day becomes almost the same in this weird way. But, uh, but it's also, but we're also doing good. How's homeschooling going? Well, our kids are not old enough for homeschool. Oh, I guess they are right. They're little. So yeah, Maya's f four and a half, almost five and Maxwell's two and a half. So the, <laughs> it's just constant stimulation and uh luckily we still we have a we have help we have a nanny and i have an amazing wife and uh and we figure we're figuring it out you know right. we're figuring I, it out like everybody else that's you can do <laughs> uh, well i watch um i love what you've been doing at night um for so many different reasons just popping on and being your spontaneous self and really bringing joy to everyone who's watching it, but also, you know, when, when you watch these the reactions to, to, you know, when, so, when, you, when you beam into someone's house and they're not expecting and you see their anxiety and excitement and everything, and then there's also this peacefulness, you're, you're able to calm everyone down in sort of a, <laughs> a magical way. But I loved last night with Samantha and our budding director. Oh, um, she was so sweet. Oh, she was so oh. sweet and she was dealing with a lot. I, by the way, Thank you for watching. That's so cool of you. Uh, I, you never know who watches these things, and I and 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 honestly, it's it's been it's been really a cool experience because you know there's a lot of like celebrities going live with other celebrities and people wanting to build followings and all that stuff. And I, and for me, I just I I was I was praying one night, and then I just heard this voice that was just like go on Instagram live, which is a weird thing to say. Cause like, it's like, just, it's like go live. It just felt, I felt this strong urge to go live. And it was like 11 o'clock at night. And I realized also that in the times that I've been the lowest in my life, the times where I've been suffering the most from anxiety or yeah, maybe a depression I didn't know I had, it always was amplified at night when I was alone late at night, right before I fall asleep. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I didn't oh, lock the door. Hi, baby. Let's see baby. This is Maxwell. Maxwell, hi. I'm I am sorry, a Maxwell you, too, but he's do you wanna 18. Say, do you want to say hi? Yeah, hi. This is also the other part of quarantine. Hold on, sweetheart. Come here. Baby. It's the best. Come say hi. This is Maya. Hi, Maya. She can't hear Maya, you because daddy's got headphones you. in. Hold on, here. Maya, I saw you and Maxwell the other night, both of you doing some breathing. Put this Do you in. think you could teach me how to breathe? Can you teach her how to breathe? Look at her. You got to look at her this way. I she know said, you can do it. Can you teach her how to take a deep breath? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Ah, that's I love you both. Can I have a kiss? I got I to got, I put you guys down. I got to put you guys down. I love you. Mwah. Daddy's on Instagram Live. This is the way it works. I Can mean, you say this bye? is it. This is real fatherhood, right? This is the way it works. Like. This is the way, way it works. Okay. Maxwell, you. how old are you? Hold on. Here. How old are you? How old are you? No, are you two? One, two. How many fingers? What are uh, you? Do you, want, do you want to tell her what we say every single night? The what do you say every single night? Is my strongest muscle in my whole body is my heart. Okay, can you say Look, bye? Sending you a kiss, Maxwell. Oh, you got a kiss oh, back. Okay, bye. Okay, this Justin, is it. Justin, all right, we're done. Forget it. I don't need you. <laughs> I mean, okay, what were we I talking about? From Maxwell. By the way. I just want you to know that I have a Maxwell. He's 18, about to turn 18. So I'm at you the other end Maxwell. of the spectrum. But First it, of all. Maxwell comes with good juju. He's like such a good egg. Did you, um, did he start to go by Max or did you keep, did he keep it Maxwell? Nah, he goes by Max. Yeah. We're going to, I'm going to keep it Maxwell until he decides he's Max. Somehow the world sort of took that one over. I had to, I know. you know, there are things you can control and things you can't. Exactly. Um, okay, okay, so we're talking about live. So, is, so we're at Baker's Women. We're talking about your live. Yeah. And so with that night, so I started going. So I started going live, and I and I felt this strong urge because of because I just feel so many people are hurting at night, and we don't always have the tools to know what to do when we're hurting, or when we're feeling anxiety. And 
I also know that uh, for this virus is affecting people disproportionately based on who they are, where they are, their economic class, their race. Um, uh, uh, and I just was like, well, maybe I should just go and just talk to some people. And what we found was that there's a lot of people hurting right now, and especially at night. And um, some magical things happened. And I started getting messages. And it was un it's unbelievable when you get a message from somebody who says that they were going to take their life and they didn't simply because you gave a few minutes of your time. Um, oh. And, and, and well, we, and the more I started to do it, the more little communities started to, to build and, and people would come on and they would be, they'd be in so much pain. And then other people would come on and tell them how amazing they were and they would DM each other afterwards. And, and that's what, that's like the beauty of social media. Like that's the other side of it. Like this, of course there's negative parts of it. And there's the all the stuff that comes with comparison, but then there's also the community aspect of it, which you guys at Makers are so beautiful and so wonderful at building. Um, but yeah, so it's been really fun, and and here we are. It's been magical, it really is. And I have watched one, and then you also got on with an expert at one point, and you were talking because you do have this audience, and it is night, and it's so brilliant to also bring on experts talking about suicide. I mean, there. I mean, yeah. it's just. Well, the craziest part so, was I, one of the nights I, one of the, fa one of the people I randomly went live with the, uh, the second or third night ended up being an expert. She was, uh, her name is Jazz, uh, someone you should definitely talk to. And she was, a, she had just written her book and her book tour got canceled because of the pandemic. And she was somebody that had tried to take her life and had been through it and is now is dedicating her life to help people not take theirs and randomly joined my Instagram. She had a face oh mask on. And then like, we like, and then we had a, like a book launch party on my Instagram live and she gave people <laughs> tips and tools and tricks. Um, and it's just been such a magical thing. I'm just so ins like, when I feel down, I get so inspired by community and by the people because we're isolated right now. And there's so many beautiful people out in the world that are doing amazing things. Well, like the you. other thing that you're doing, Justin, is you're also like on top of that, we are all home, many of us as families. And what there was a particular post that you did that may seem so simple, but I felt like it just, I felt, you know, this ripple effect. When you posted the picture of yeah, um, yours and Maxwell's painted toenails. And I thought like that- You mean these? Are they little <gasps> Sam? So they have been, they have been like this. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Yeah, Maya, Maya paints our toenails. But I mean, if, if what it says is there are all these, you know, dads and moms at home, and this is something we can all do together. This isn't just a, you know, defined girl activity. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're a dad, I, I bet you there's not a, lot of, a whole lot of dads <laughs> still watching this. Uh, but if, there are, if, if you're a dad... I mean, it's like, it's so easy. When your daughter says, do you want to paint, can I paint your toenails or your, your fingernails? You say, yeah, you know, yeah, and that's, that's it. <laughs> I know. Well, let's also talk about the, uh, the cold dunkings that you've been doing and the cold showers. That one, I'm not sure I can get on board with Justin, but tell me. Come on. Yes, you can. I yes, you can. Are you kidding? It's cold enough and we're with in every, now. Everything that you've done in this world, trust me, you can do cold showers. Start it and make, like, please. I know you, I know what you're, I, <laughs> so let me just tell you, I have been terrified of the cold my whole life. I was somebody that if I went out in the cold for too long, I would, do, I would get sick. And um, there was something about it that just, I just had an un, I had a, irrational fear. Um, and I'd been following, I'd been very inter interested in like various body hacks and, and mostly things from my mind. Uh, and I just kept, kept coming back to cold plunging. And there was this part of me that was like, oh, no, no, no. You can do everything else except that. <clears throat> Similar to your reaction. Like, any, go, go do anything else. Like, right. I have a bunch of crazy tools in my house for this kind of stuff. And it was that fear that made me go, all right, well, what is it about this that I'm so uncomfortable with? And, and that's, and I can't like be somebody that talks about learning to be comfortable in the uncomfortable if I'm not doing it myself. Like, and I was feeling like, okay, I gotta, I'm calling myself out here. I'm being a little bit of a hypocrite. And so on my, on my birthday this year, I turned 36 in January. I called a bunch of my friends and I said, I'm afraid of doing this. Will you come do this with me? I bought a freezer. I bought like a 
cheap freezer at like Best Buy. I, you know, I, I followed the instructions. I put like the silicone in it. I filled it with water. I made it cold. And I uh, asked a friend of mine, uh, his name's Coach Joe. He has this, uh, this really cool retreat called Runga where they teach you how to do this. And I asked him to come. And like 20 of us did this cold plunge really to help me do it. And the first time, and, he, and I learned how to breathe. And I'll tell you, it was like taking a happiness pill. And, really? and, and it's terrible, especially when it's like 36, 38 degrees. But I keep mine just below 50 now. When and you what say I, mine, do you, is there a, something you go into? You have the little device. Can you show us? I ha you want? I have a. You want to here? Yeah. I have to go around the house, so hopefully, uh, um, we'll see if I get uh, tackled by the kids. No, we we I, like that. But um, yeah. So it's a freezer. It's basically a converted freezer. It's not expensive, um, and I get. I just. I, that's why my hair is wet. I just got in. This is what it looks like. Oh my god. So I put oh these like, I went to Home Depot and I put these uh, plastic like fake to kind of make it look prettier. And then it's just a <laughs> freezer. Are you kidding me? And it's and, literally uh, meant for a cold plunge? No, this is, a, this is a freezer that you would store like meat and stuff in. Oh, no. And so we, and we, and we uh, put silicone in it. And then now it's just uh, a very chilly. <laughs> oh my God, Justin. <laughs> and you, and you get in. Me. And, and you breathe deeply and you stay in for three minutes, How ideally, long? but three minutes is what I do. Um, and uh, like right now, it's pretty, it's a little warm. It's set at 50, right now it's 51, the one I just did. And you stay in for three or, three or four minutes. But I'll tell you, it has been so incredible for me and my mind. And the other thing that I've been doing is, I, but I started with cold showers. So I did that the first time. And then I went, all right, that was intense, but how can I work up to it? So I started following like the Wim Hof breathing method and my friend Joe. And if you just start with a 15 second cold shower, that's all you need. At the end of your hot shower, start with a cold shower. It, Im it improves circulation. It, um, it, it, it's incredible for your mind. It actually helps me with procrastination because I'm writing my book right now. And as you know, like when? you get writer's block. Yes. And, um, How's that going? I mean, as if what, I mean, what else is on the checklist? Directing, I know it's hard. Producing, it's been, owning it's, a business, acting. Now you're writing. What's the book? Ah, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it's. I, we haven't even announced it. It's uh, it's called Man Enough. Oh. Um, it's okay. It's totally fine. I've been talking about. It. I've been writing a book, but I'm writing a book about uh, my journey with masculinity, and um, I've been working on it for a couple years, and uh, and the what was interesting was I had. <laughs> my deadline was a fast approaching and the quarantine hit at the right time. But of course, like I'm finishing both my last movie and the book at the same time. So it's a bit wild. And this is why like the cold plunge and the cold showers has been so helpful for me because when I'm feeling anxiety, when I'm feeling like there's just too much happening and it's all between the, the craziness of this pandemic and the world. And, you know, a friend of mine was in the ICU 37 years old on a ventilator for six days in a coma and like, you know, my, uh, I have a cousin who just passed away and you see, and you, you turn it all off. And for me, if I can just get in that cold water for 30 seconds or a minute or three minutes, something about it forces me to be present and think about only the fact that this is uncomfortable, this is painful, and I'm focused on my breathing and I'm almost in this meditative place and not, I can't think about anything else. I can't think about the world. I can't think about the problems. I can't think about the virus. I can't think about my book or the movie or my company and my employees. I can only think about where I am now. And that is the key to mindfulness. So we all have different ways of getting there. For me, okay, I'm just such Justin, a... You're convincing me. If I don't get in a cold shower for 15 seconds today, 15. like I owe you one, all right? 15. Just listen. All, all you right, got to do... Backbakers women, you're all getting in a cold shower today in honor of Justin. Um... <laughs> It's been so I, amazing. I, I promise honest. you're going to like it. But do it okay. every day. Just do it. Listen, do it every day. End your warm shower with 15 seconds of cold. And if you're having a day where you're feeling a lot, just make yourself go and get into the cold water. Just do it for 15 seconds. And what you'll find is you're going to, you end up leaving with like a, <sighs> and as we know, like yeah, when like you a, smile. Oh, I'm so glad it's over. Yes, but that smile, just that smile changes your brain chemistry 
and it ha and it you helps you become nothing. happier. You do live in LA, you realize. I'm in like 35 degree weather right now, but I'm well, then, doing it. Like, you just need to go outside then. <laughs> exactly, that's my cold lunch. All right, Justin, wait, I want to get back. You just said you're doing a book, Man Enough. Our audience at Makers Women is like in love with this idea of it's so vital to our movement to redefine masculinity. And one of the things that you said that I wrote down was uh, men see vulnerability as a weakness. Mm. Yeah. And it's so profound. Like, how do we how do we change that mentality? And I know you're working really hard too. Well, I, it's interesting, and I, I I do write a lot about this. Um, it's it's not even so much. There's there's a couple sides to this because um, I've been really trying to understand. Uh, why so many men are resistant to it. And there's a few reasons why. And it's complicated because, as you know, both men and women have been socialized in their own way uh, right. because of the existing uh, society and, our, and the patriarchy, if you will, um, to see things a certain way. So there's two sides of this coin that I am trying to figure out how to deal with, and I can only deal with the male side. And men... Uh, are policed by other men. And one of the things that I learned growing up is if I show my weaknesses, it mm -hmm. provides an opportunity for another man to then uh, take advantage of that and then jump up above me on the like uh, hierarchy of the food chain, like the man enough alpha ladder. So, you know, by, right. by being open or by expressing my fears or my insecurities, it just creates a, a, a situation where I can now be like policed and brought down to a lower level where somebody else can then use that to kind of rise above me. And that's just like the basic, it's like man of 101. It's like what we do as men to each other. Um, and the other part of it is that I know a lot of men who have felt that when they do show up uh, as themselves, um, when they do show up and try to be vulnerable, they found that it... Um, and this is, this is a tricky thing to talk about, but they found that it also, that the women in their life don't respond to it. Mm -hmm. That, that, uh, and, and that's something that- You mean that, the expectations. Uh, there are that expectations that, that Disney has helped with and uh, uh, every movie ever has helped with that men look a certain way. I mean, look at, the, look at the Marlboro Man. And that was like the idea of a man for years and years and years and years. Um, and that changed in the 80s, and then that's changing now, even today. And now we're like starting to see other, other kind of examples of what a man is. But I get so many messages from men saying, I was so open and vulnerable with my girlfriend, and then she left me. Or, and there's so much more going on than that. And, I, and so what I, what I try to work with the men is, look, I think that there's a balance. And I don't think we should, and I don't think we need to completely redefine masculinity. I think in many ways we need to undefine masculinity, which is a little bit more about what my book is. Because I think I when you define, that. I think when you define something, then you are by nature creating an expectation. And anybody who sits outside of that definition then becomes an other. And so instead of redefining masculinity, I'm actually a little more interested in undefining masculinity and opening it up so that if you identify as a man, then you're a man. Right. And um, and so back to like the vulnerability as men were, were told that like this, like being brave and strong uh, is looking at like the the people that run in the burning buildings, which is true. And our and our police, which is true. Um, and our, our our war heroes, which is true. Right. We're taught that that is what bravery and strength is. But what about the alcoholic? Who, who recognizes that he can't do it alone and goes to an AA meeting? Yeah. What about the father who after 15 years realizes that he made a huge mistake in leaving his family and not talking to his children and comes back and asks for forgiveness? You know, there are so many examples of other types of bravery and strength that don't fall into the current definition of what it means to be brave and strong. And that other side of that vulnerability is something that I just would want to include. And so instead of saying like, let's redefine it to include it, I would say let's undefine it. And I think vulnerability 
bravery, strength, all of these things, like it all takes vulnerability. Like to, to run into a burning building to save somebody's life takes you being willing to lose your life, yeah. Yeah. right? And it takes you being willing, knowing like, and many of these heroes, like use doctors as an example right now. I have dear friends of mine. I have a friend of mine who's a doctor who has a brand new baby and a wife. And he has been self quarantined away from them for six weeks. Why? Because he's putting his life on the line to go fight COVID-19 every day. That's brave. Now, the other part of that bravery is he is making a conscious choice knowing that he could get sick and or die. And he's willing to do that to save somebody else's life. So the act is brave, but underneath it is also what's brave. That's vulnerability. And that same vulnerability can be, can be seen everywhere if you just open your eyes and look at it. And we just look around and as men, we just need to know that, that me calling my friend when I'm struggling at nine o'clock at night and saying, yo man, I'm really, I'm really struggling. Like I'm, I'm like, a, I feel like I just want to just go look at porn and I, I'm distracting myself. That's fucking bravery. There's no, there's like, it's all the same thing. It's being willing to go into yourself into a place of discomfort where you can risk something that's all it is. And it looks like a lot of different things. So that's, that's one example. I could talk, of course, forever. I'm, I'm not trying I know. to, well, yeah. But the one, the, I know, and we, I, I am cognizant of your time, but there's one other piece. No, no, I'm not, no, we're good. We're good. Don't worry about okay. it. We're good. Okay. I would love, I'm so excited to be talking to you. Well, the, the other part that I loved in your TED Talk was how scary it was for you. Like that great story of you having to go on a guy's trip to then like and you you were like because i wanted to be vulnerable and then it was a three-day guys trip and i couldn't even do it until the end right no. no i couldn't and it's it's a true story it's like not even there's no there's no fabrications of that story that was really what happened um and that's this weird thing is like no matter and it's so funny because i've i've had so many people come to me and say like oh you're so woke and you're like this and the truth is is like i'm not i deal I am struggling with the same exact things I'm talking about in real time. There is no like sense of arrived. And I, I think it's also important for people to know that, that and I'm, look, I'm gonna look at everybody here, that the people you follow on Instagram, the people whose books you read, they are no farther along in their spiritual journey and emotional journey than you. They're, they're not, there's, there's no like real guru. There's no one that's really made, if you've made it, you're not alive anymore. You're into the next world, wherever that is in heaven. Because like this journey of being alive is about the work and figuring this out. So we're all continually growing. So as I talk about this stuff, I'm dealing with it in real time. Right. The, same, the same social norms and socialization that I deal with as a man, I am fighting while I'm talking about the things that I'm talking about. So like I still, to this day, three years later after that men's trip, struggle with picking up the phone to call a guy and ask for help. You gotta unlearn, matter. Justin. And <laughs> you know what? And, un and unlearning is a lifelong process. And that's the other thing that I wanna say to everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or, or however you define yourself. Like we've all been constructed in a certain way and the world has placed their rules on us and it takes forever to unlearn and to relearn. And so long as we're aware of these things, I think that we're winning. I think that we're doing a good job. I think that we can pat ourselves on the back and be gentle to ourselves because who knows if I will ever like be like, oh yeah, I'm really struggling with this. Let me call my buddy or like, who knows if I'll ever be comfortable with that. But just knowing that I'm not comfortable with it and I do it, that's a win. Like that's a big win and we have to celebrate that. Yes. Well, I don't know. And it, I don't know if you've read Untamed, but Glennon's book, it's a, there's a similar, you know. You know, it's so funny. My wife just ordered it. Yeah. Uh, I had You're multiple people, it. I had multiple people text me about her and I just followed her and I thought she was following me and I had a little freak out and I was like, oh my God. And I saw that you had her on not too long ago. So I'm going to connect with yeah. her. I'd love to talk to her more about her journey of it. But I had a few people reach oh out to God. me and say. Oh my God, you will break the internet together. It's just like, it would be <laughs> pure heaven. I'd um, love to meet her. I, I'm gonna reach out to her afterwards. Please do, I'm happy. I don't think you need to be connected, but I'm happy to help. Um, 
so Justin, one little we have to, I have to do these in mid breaks or my social media Angela will kill me. We're I'm Dylan McGee, founder and executive producer of At Makers Women. I'm here with the amazing Justin Baldoni, who has like you need you need extra hands to like define all the different things that he wants to do and like when is this book coming out? Uh, I there's I can't I, I can't say that yet because there's a there's a few things in the air with it uh, in terms of uh, you know oh, uh, an announcement and things but it'll be 20 it'll be next year it'll be next right. year exactly but right. yeah but I'm I'm, uh, I'm, all, I, I'm about to hit I'm about to hit send to the publisher so so can we talk about Wayfarer a little bit just because we at Makers Women are so glad that you exist and I wonder you know, I wonder if this current environment has inspired any new ideas for you. I wonder what's on the horizon. You know, I would love to hear what you guys are doing to help yeah. change, so, shake up Hollywood. You know, it's so funny you bring that up. So on Monday or Tuesday, we're going to make a uh, a pretty cool announcement that I would actually love to work with you on. So I'm going to I'm going to hit you up after this because it's not okay. quite ready to share yet. Okay. Um, what I'm thinking about right now is how to empower people. Um, because to a certain extent, so many people in our country and the world are feeling uh, like their power has been taken away, like their agency has been taken away. Um, and if you look at our industry as an example, uh, I've always said that the people on a film set are the people that I would want to like, <laughs> because there, you have somebody that represents everything, right? right. Um, and you know, historically, when you look at times like this, the things that have kept us moving is the entertainment business, is creativity. And we've never dealt with a situation where the entertainment business was like, you know, shackled. But here we are, and we're seeing all these new, exciting, fun, creative ways that people are coming together. And we're seeing now, because everybody has these devices, we're seeing the power of creativity and the, and the triumph of the human spirit. And we're seeing things happening all over the world. And so what we're thinking about a lot at Wayfair is how we can help do more of that and how we can um, put power in the hands of the people to a certain extent. And that's what we're excited about, uh, about this new thing that we're working on. And then in terms of um, specifically what we're doing, I, I, I started a studio called Wayfair Studios. And our goal is to create content that makes us want to be better people instead of content that makes us feel better about being worse <laughs> things that bring us together things uh things that highlight uh the 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 triumphant nature of the human experience you know um, my next movie clouds is about this young kid named zach sobiak who wrote a song called clouds right before he passed away and and he uh the day the week he died he ended up hitting number one on itunes uh, I made a short. I made a short documentary about him, and we optioned his mom's book, and we turned that into a story with Warner Brothers. And I'm just finishing that right now. And we just are so interested in telling stories that make us feel better, that remind us how powerful each of us are. Um, and we're looking to we're looking to find all types of amazing voices that maybe haven't had the chance to make it in this industry yet because of the way that they look or where they are or whether they have access or not. So we're trying to figure out ways to disrupt in, in that particular way, because how do you find the next Ava DuVernay? You know, how do you like, I was, I was banging on doors in Hollywood all in my twenties and nobody was answering because of a lot of different reasons. So how do you, how do you kind of expand the search and open it up and find diverse voices and, and diverse opinions and thought. And so that's what we're really focused on at Wayfair right now, figuring well, that out over the next year or two. Are gonna want, first of all, let us know, you know, Wayfair and Makers together can, would be amazing. Um, but I feel like people are gonna um, need hopeful content. I think there's gonna be a new level of, you know, we were talking the other day about when people went through 9-11, and a lot of content came out about 9-11. It was very, even though it was the globe saw it and experienced it, it still was an emotional thing for people in New York. Really, mm -hmm. that's where the, but with this, this has touched everyone Everybody. and this tragedy and we're going through a global trauma together. And I think content is going to be something that people, people are turning to it now, but I think even more uh, in terms of wanting hope and inspiration. Um, and diversity it, of stories. 
it's a bummer that it takes a pandemic for us to do that. But yeah. it did. And here we are. <clears throat> because again, for the first time in, in human history, the entire world, thanks to technology, is all thinking about one thing. Yeah. And there is unity in that. And, and as a Baha'i, Baha'u'llah says, so powerful is the light of unity that it can illumine the whole earth. And so, yes, this virus is terrible. Yes, it is killing people. Yes, it is destroying and wrecking the global economy. But at the same time, it seems like we all had to be brought together in some way. And this, there could be a lot worse ways. This is not World War III, right? This could prevent World War III. Who knows? If we can stop otherizing ourselves, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and putting ourselves in these factions and these groups and thinking that one race is better than another or one country is better than another. Well, like what's possible? And for the first time, we're all thinking about one common enemy, which is this invisible virus. And we're all realizing we're not immune. We're humans and we have to figure it out together. And that's light to me and that's hope. And I do think that we need uh, more content with hope and with purpose. And I've been saying it for a long time, but maybe this is going to be something that people really respond to. And it's like, you know, maybe this is the time. That's war. That's that's what we're betting on at least. I think it is. Um, so Justin, you're, um, you seem to take every opportunity to turn, you know, <clears throat> something negative into something, you know, magical and positive. And in addition to all of your Instagram and your, um, all that you're doing right now to give back you've also i just want to hear a little bit about your be love oh yes so i have a foundation called the wayfair foundation and we throw every year we throw um this pretty cool event called the carnival of love hmm. where uh it started i started celebrating my birthday on skid row 10 years ago uh just as, as i didn't have a ton of friends it was just a way for me to kind of guilt people into going down there and the idea was that every day there's a birthday on skid row but nobody really gets celebrated from the outside in and um and it wasn't about like fixing the problem it was about seeing people so we'd make food and we'd you know bring our clothes down but really it was about the one to one connection between us and another human being when i got jane the virgin i had this crazy idea i said well can i what if we threw a carnival what does a carnival do a carnival goes to these places around the country and it lifts them up for a day. It gives them something to look forward to. So I thought, well, what if we threw a carnival and we designed it and made it kind of sexy on the outside so people could come and volunteer. But in reality, what we would bring besides the food and the games and the fun and the people would be necessary services that our unhoused friends could use. So over the last five years, we just had the, the fifth or sixth, the sixth carnival of love um, the fifth carnival of love, we essentially bring every service you could ever imagine into one place over one day. And the carnival's design, we have two, over 2,000 volunteers. It's become one of LA's largest volunteer events. And one um, uh, volunteer is paired with one, an unhoused friend. And they walk through the carnival together to create a one-on-one -on -one experience. And from haircuts to massages to feet washing and pedicures and psycho psychologists and legal services and resume building and jobs people are hiring to like medical things and dental exams and ID cards, you name it. It's all in one place besides clothing and shoes and all the things that um, the, some of the superficial things that they would need. Um, and it worked. And through that, through that, I've started something called the one-to-one -one program where basically it's a tiny pilot program where we're, asking people to sign up for one year of friendship with someone who's unhoused. And I believe that through the power of love and being seen, we can help transition people off of the street because sometimes they get lost in the system. So knowing that there are 65,000 people on the streets of Los Angeles, knowing that uh, we're all going to need masks and it's what a weird world we're living in. Like we're all going to need to be wearing masks if we're going to go out in public. Um, and as you see, people are getting really creative with designing their own. I thought, well, our mission is think, see, choose, be, love, right? The idea that in the Baha'i faith, we're told the reality of man is his thought, right? So it starts with our thought and then it becomes our actions. So I literally just had this idea and I was like, well, what if we just made be love masks? <laughs> ah! um, so 
uh, and the whole idea with the B-Lev masks, and I, and I partnered with a company called Sub-Zero Masks because we don't have the capacity to make these things. And they're all made in Los Angeles. Is that um, for every mask sold, we're going to give one to someone on the street um, personally, not like a Tom's model where it's like it may or may not get it's one to one. But also for every unfiltered mask, I think eight dollars goes directly to the foundation, because what we're doing during COVID-19 is I have somebody, a dear friend of mine, Melvin, who used to be on the street unhoused, who's now working for the foundation, who is helping at risk people get into emergency housing via the city. And so we're spending this money on the people on the street. Not a dime goes to me. Um, and for every sale, $8 for an unfiltered mask and $12 for a filtered mask. And there's three styles. There's this one, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I like it. And then there's this one. All right. We've got awesome. the heart in the middle. And then there's just the regular B-Love. They're super simple. Aww. And the idea is like, if we're going to cover up our smiles, then at least let's make somebody smile. Okay. Uh, so that's it. And, uh, and I'm in. So, wait, where, yeah. what website? I'm putting it up. So at the end of this, I can do it. I have to go take a cold shower and do what's the website. It's, it's a, the links in my bio. Uh, it's the, I, I made the link in my bio. It's like okay, sub so zero, we'll sub sub zero masks and then slash Wayfair or something. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, but, everyone. Yeah. We just want to help. It's just, we, look, we just want to help. That's all it's about. But you know, it's sometimes I think it, I love that idea of one-to-one -one because I think sometimes these, you know, issues that we struggle with can escalate and feel so big uh, that we can't wrap our hands around it. But sometimes you forget about the power of one-to-one -one and, and giving back right now, especially is, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you could almost see it as it, you're giving, but you're receiving so much <laughs> when you give. The truth is, as we all know, like when you give, you're actually the one receiving. Yeah. And, uh, and that's the kind of like secret of the universe that nobody really talks about is it's in the giving that, that the real receiving takes place when you can do it in a way that's pure and you just are doing it to do it. And it's true. Like you, you make a really good point. It can feel so big that the largeness of the problem of all the problems becomes paralyzing. So it stops you from doing anything. But if you can bring it down and you focus on one person, like you imagine, like the other night, all I needed to know was that first night I went live, one person didn't kill themselves. Great. So every night I go on, if I can just help one person, I don't need to have 10,000 people or 3,000 people watching. What if 10 people watch? Great. It's like quieting the ego and just saying one. If I can impact one, that's all that matters. And I truly believe like when we get to the other side, when we get to, when we stand before God, it's not going to be how many millions of people we all touched. It's going to be like the one or the two. And that's the big thing with our culture right now. It's so big. Everyone's got to be so big. And well, I want to, I want to impact a billion people and touch a million people. And I want to be Insta famous and TikTok famous. And it's like, yeah, but like, are they all going to show up at your funeral? Like, how about the two people or the five people? And in many ways for me, I've realized that those people exist in my own house and if I focus on all the work out there and forget about the work I have to do in here, then that doesn't work either. So it's really just about bringing it down to the maximum impact, which is like just a couple people that are in our lives or the person that is your neighbor. It doesn't have to be a million people. Well, Justin, uh, I'm going to let you go back and focus on your people at home and know that you're off the hook for today. You've inspired one. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy, I, you're uh, awesome. I, I'm really... Uh, I just, you know, I, you're just a gift to all of us. And uh, I'm such a fan of you and what you've built. My wife is a huge fan as well. I was so honored to be one of your makers men a few years ago. And, uh, and I, uh, I'm excited for whenever you start doing your conferences again. And uh, I just, well, I just think come. what you've built, so you, you send me the invite, I'll be there. But you just, I just want to just tell you that what you built is not easy. Um, and it's really inspiring and exciting and it's doing so much good in the world. And, uh, and again, the one, you have a lot of the ones, but you're built around the one and that one-to-one -one connection. And I just appreciate you. And thank you for taking the time to, to do what you do for all of us. Thanks, Justin. That means a lot. It really does. Um, will you do me one favor? Yeah. In addition to, uh, the fact that I have to take a cold shower and buy a ton of masks today. 
I want you to end this teaching me. I am, my team will admit that I'm not the best at breathing and meditation, but I'm, I watched your daughter and Maxwell do it on Instagram. And I was like, I can do that. So we're going to end this with a box breath or something. Like box that. breathing. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and you know what the truth is? Remember yes. what I said earlier about how we're not experts. I'm no. doing it at the same. I'm not either. My wife will be the first to tell you she's way better at breathing than me, but I've been using this as a way to help myself also be better at breathing. And it's great. All right, so box okay. breathing is really simple. Think okay. of it like a square, all right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna breathe in through our nose okay. for five seconds, all right? We're gonna hold for five seconds. We're gonna breathe out through our mouth for five seconds, and then we're gonna hold for five seconds. Oh, okay? That's a lot to I remember. Know. Well, I'm, I'm gonna coach you through it, all right? And if you're watching, <laughs> and if you're watching this, by by the way, somebody told me, did, are you, do you have a cold right now? Somebody said you have a cold. No. I just looked at, oh, okay. So they're talking about something else. I, I was going to feel bad if, uh, if I was making you breathe via your sickness. Um, no. Okay, good. I'm not okay. looking at the comments. Then. All right. All right. So I'll, co I'll, co I'll coach you through this. It's okay. super easy. And just for the first time, through the nose, and we're going to count to five, all right? And I'll walk you through it. You ready? And if you're watching this at home, you can do it too, all right? Stop what you're doing. Don't comment for a second. And do it with us. Yeah, right. right. Here we we'll go. see if that happens. And all right. And slowly in through the nose. One, two, three. Keep breathing. Four. Fill. Hold. And slowly through the mouth. Hold. One more time, in through the nose. Hold. Slowly out through the mouth. Hold. And that's it. I feel better. It's amazing how it can just like I can I can feel it. I, it's almost like it just kind of brings you down totally. a little bit, and that's such. And I just did it in the cold water. Um, I do it in the cold showers. And just so you know, when you get in the cold shower today, yes, you're going to have your body tell you no. Yes, but that is bravery and courage, right? When you make yourself do something you don't want to do, your body's going to say, "What am I? Why would I?" Why am I getting in the cold water? It's 30 degrees outside. What am I doing? Do it and do an exhale right before. So you take a huge breath, you exhale, and you get in and try to not go like this. <gasps> <laughs> remind yourself, remind yourself that okay. you're safe. You're safe and it's just cold water. A couple big breaths and then get out. That's it. And that's a huge win. And that's all okay. you need. Was like you're being brave. Then I'm like, all right, I'm being brave. You're all already right, brave. So nice to see Mom. you. Thank you for having yes. me. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye. See, see you ya. soon. Thanks, Justin. Bye.